yeah, like. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Better? All good? Hi, guys! <laughs> Light's shining off my head. <laughs> so we're live now. We were live on Liam's. Uh, <laughs> this is Carlo. Carlo Napolitano. <laughs> you, you're not a Yorkshire boy, though. No, no, definitely. Nah, everyone says you're a Yorkshire boy. Yeah, can, Yorkshire boy. can you just speak to the audience so they can relish in your accent? Yes, well, I'm, uh, come, come I'm an Cunian Salfordian. So, uh, <laughs> you know, my accent, uh, my father's Italian, my mother's Maltese. I'm an Australian citizen and I was born in Manchester, so it doesn't get much. Much more confusing than that, really. <laughs> yeah, hey, awesome. Did it, did you, didn't I say, is he from Malta? No. No, so I told, I was talking to somebody just recently, and they're like, guess where that person's from, like Malta. I've been to Malta. Have you? Well, oh, I haven't. Oh, I it's beautiful, no, 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 beautiful. It's, a, it's a such a small island. All my family, my mum's family went over to uh, the UK quite young. Yeah, yeah. So we've never, we've never really returned to yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, okay. Which is mad, but I've uh, been to, obviously, Italy a fair few times. And yep. Uh, We've had a few tours there, mate, which I yep. think we're going to speak about anyway. Definitely. Pretty excited about it. Let's, ju let's jump on board, shall we? Now, you're going to have to sit because I'm short. You sit. Carlo, you was sitting. I was. Oh. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh. What did you say? Oh, man. What did you say? I thought you were sitting. <laughs> oh. <laughs> He's a cheeky man. He's a cheeky man. Hey, so you know the deal with the with the headphones yeah, while we yeah. listen to them? We had, didn't have you before and properly in shot. Are you good there, Sheena? Can you yeah, I know. That's okay. That's good. Have to, okay. just have to speak into the mic. Uh, this mic always cuts my face off, but that's yeah, okay. Don't, you don't want to do that. Yeah, anymore. it's not like I'm not the star of the show or anything. Uh, you are the star of the show. <laughs> you are. You are the star of the show. Nobody puts baby you keep, in oh, exactly. you keep me in check <laughs> when I say silly things. Are you ready to go then? Ready as ever. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Look at that. Broadcasting from the world famous Bondi Beach. This is Bondi Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Weekend Wellness Show and I'm Liam Zoller, your host, and I'm down here with Sheena Alexandra, my co-host and a special guest, Carlo Napolitano. Hi, right, mate. <laughs> yeah, mate, I'm super excited about this conversation. Napolitano. Oh. Carlo Napolitano. I was, I was telling Sheena the, uh, yesterday, I think, I was saying I'm, we're going to bring Carlo Napolitano on. He said, she said, oh, he's full of talent. I go, Yes, with an English accent. <laughs> from, from sunny Salford, yeah. From, that, from that, sunny Salford. That's correct, that's correct, yeah. My father's an Italian, full-blown Italian, and my mother's from Malta. Um, yeah, I was born in Manchester, Salford, where my mother and father met. And yeah, I've been at uh, Colin, Australia home now for the past 13 years, bar a year back in the UK. Back here. Yeah, exactly right. So you know why, uh, Sheena, why uh, Carlo's very important in my life? We're just chatting about this, about the humble hero yes, scenario. Yes. So he was the man who, uh, when I was, I, I went on a tour, uh, I, I, like I left footy behind, rugby league behind, I left my business behind, and I just went traveling for, it ended up being three months, but it, it ended up being six months, but I, I was intending to go for three. And I was sitting on a beach in Greece, I think, or I might have been just in Italy, in, in uh, Napoli. And I got an email from, Carlo and the crew, because I was part of the Italian national uh, rugby league team, but it wasn't, you know, it was the Italian A team back then. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty the development much. Side, the yeah. development side of things. And I got an email saying, you know, they're getting the, the Italian uh, team together, national team together, to play against Wales. And I was sitting on the beach retired, you know, 24 years old. I was retired from footy. Oh, right. And okay. I go, I want to come. I want to come play, and then he said, yeah, this is what I appreciate with Carlo, he's always honest, and I don't know if he remembers this, but he said, I don't think he can make it because we've already got 12 Aussies picked. So back then, we, we had a loophole in it, and he said, the only way to do it is go to the north of Italy, like, within days, and go play in the local leagues. Yeah, you had to, to qualify through playing in the domestic competition. In the domestic competition. Yeah. So I actually made it as an Italian, uh, Italian oh, resident, not as an Aussie import. Wow. So, oh, so you played for the Italian team. Played for the Italian national team, but wow. before that I played in the Italian domestic team. Wow. Probably, probably the first competition that we ever had in domestic, to be honest. Yeah, it was. Um, so it was in Italy, it was in Europe that you guys met? No, no, no we met I, over here, we, but then... I've known Liam for a... a I can't even remember, probably 2001. Yeah, because it was... 2001, okay, 2002, okay. Some, some, around that area mm. there. Uh, but Liam has always been a part of the Italian setup, and yeah. the, the Italian the Italian rugby league really has... Uh, it started in, in um, Australia, but it, obviously it's 
uh, well started in Italy in the 60s but then had a, 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 a many years that it just uh, fell, up, fell away yeah. so we restarted it in Australia for those that don't know the listeners that don't know that the second largest community of Italians is, is actually Australia so yeah. it's a formula that works well for us because they're all pretty good at rugby league yeah exactly right and then I, so I'm sitting on the beach and then I get this email I said you're not going to make it so I go to the north of Italy I play in the in the local leagues, everyone spoke Italian. I couldn't speak Italian. <laughs> so I was trying to direct people around the park and you yeah. know, because that, that was my position at the time. And I couldn't speak a word of it. So I ended up making it uh, on the wing, you know, as a, as a position that I'm unfamiliar with. So he said there was a position opened up uh, against Wales. We played against Wales, who were the European champions back then. Yeah, that's right. and, and we beat them. Wow. So we, we were like a under, true underdog story in that situation. Yeah. But you, we were, you didn't speak the language and you didn't know how to play your position. <laughs> didn't know how to play my position. But it was funny about that because that's what I talk about in my book, yeah. The Humble Hero, because you know there was this one guy who I thought was a bully. He plays in the NRL now. And I mentioned him. Like For years he used to pick on me. He used to say, go stand out in the wing. You know, go stand out in the wing because you're not good enough to play. He didn't say that, but it was just it was just kids banter. Yes, you yes. know, looking back on it now, but back then it, it did hurt me. Yeah. So I was pushed out to the wing, this position that I'm unfamiliar with so many times that I just got used to standing out there and not doing much. You know, just catching the ball and just doing little bits and pieces every now and again. Eight years later, or whatever it was, Carlo said, "I've got an opportunity to play for the Italian national rugby league team on the wing." I go, "Well, I've played wing a few yeah. times before, so I've got the opportunity." And when when we were running out to uh, against Wales, the, I think the day before we had a coffee, uh, the day of, I think we had a coffee with the bully that I thought was the bully who, uh, you know, eight Wait, years earlier, who pushed me on the wing. Yeah. He was a fellow so player. You have to think that. I thanked him. Yeah. You know, I thanked that guy every every day because he gave me the opportunity to, you know, see something that, you know, you know whether it was you know, just saying go on the wing, whatever it may be. I thank him. I don't say that that's a bad thing. Yeah. It's, it's all 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 great. So because you've learned the, the you learned the position that got you. Yeah. In, to play yeah. And the, the good thing about Liam coming from a from a from a coaching background, Liam is one of those one of those players that. You could tell him to play anywhere, and he would, and he would do it 110. percent And if he didn't know how to do it, he would actually, he would actually spend time with you. He was a coach's, a coach's dream, really, because mm. he would sit there and go, "How do you want me to play this position?" And I think uh, in this day and age, uh, the prima donna in, in, in all kinds of sport, um, they don't actually do that anymore. It's like I'll, I'll play I, here, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I only play left side centre. Well, to me, I've always said, if you come to me with one, with one position, then. Uh, and there's a guy there who's not as talented but can play three positions. That guy's more useful to me exactly than, right. than, the, than the player with one position. And Liam was that kind of person. If I ever knew I needed a utility, Liam was that guy. And uh, you know, sometimes it's not just about talent; it's about heart, desire, why, and want. And uh, mm. Liam had that in his, you know, in a massive capacity. And I was just an outlet for him. Mm. So I, I can always show him the door, but. Liam did more than enough to walk. Yeah, yeah, that's great. That's I, great. I appreciate that. I didn't. I didn't intend for it to be this segment to be about me. It's more about you as well. So, you know, that's what the the coach, the coach. What, what I'm, what I was getting at as well. Like, you're you're also a, a life coach in, in my mind, and and a bunch of other other styles of coaching all mixed into one. Not just the rugby league coach. You know. So where did that come from? Where did that start? Um, well, I think I've always. I've always enjoyed, uh, and again, it's subconscious over conscious, really. Subconsciously, I'm, I'm always looking after people. I want to look after people. I want people to be the best that they possibly can be. So as a coach, you have a desire to do that on a regular basis. I would never say I was the, the best rugby league coach or a sporting coach, but I understand people, and I understand what makes them tick. Uh, you know, you, you can go back, uh, and I'm not qualified in this, so... You know, I do, I do, I do say sorry if I ever say it out a wrong term. But uh, you know, I studied the Maslow hierarchy of needs. Uh, Maslow, you know, had these seven steps of act self actualization. That's the one. And um, I break it down into three of the, the, you know, security, having money coming in, being happy in what you're earning, and, and the income coming in and going out, expenses. Yeah. Uh, you know, your friends and family, and the third one, the most important, is having fun. So I, I always used to break it down in that, and I always used to identify uh, those three needs within every every player that we had. 
and to be honest, I, I really take pride in looking at different angles on, on different different people because we're all different, uh, and we'll go into that with the alopecia a little bit later, but yeah. you know, we're all different, and therefore we need, we've got different needs. Mm. So you can't put everyone in the same bracket or the same barrier. You, you have to break each other, every, everyone down, and then find out what do they need in order to, to succeed in order yeah. to have high performance and I, I love doing that like mm. logically that's how I tick yeah. that turns me on I, I really get excited about mm. understanding people's demeanour um, and understanding that we're all different and what works for one person is not going to work for the next so that, that's the challenge for me yeah definitely and you talked about the, the alopecia scenario and I was, I was mentioning you know, bullying and about my journey mm -hmm. And it, did that come up for you as a kid? And is that why you're so open and so honest and so well communicated and, and that person that people want to be around now? Yeah, I, th I think um, like for, for everyone out there, you know, I, I've had alopecia since I was four years of age um, and it was tough. Uh, everyone just sees the end product and goes, oh, you're, an, you're a cracking lad, you know, you're, you're outgoing. Mm. It, alopecia has never stopped you. No, it hasn't, but I can't say there wasn't some dark times there, mm. you know. And I do this now as, as, a, uh, as, a, as a committee member for numerous alopecia organisations. AUK have done whilst I was back in the UK and now the uh, um, Australian Alopecia Areata Foundation, which I'm a committee member of now. So um, I, I'd go around and speak to young kids who are the same age as me when they lost their hair and, and try and make them understand that their journey is, is unique. Yes. It's not the same as my journey, yeah. and I'll never say that, but uh, it's more of like parents saying, "Oh, can you get to take his hat off?" He doesn't wear. It, the, the fact is that they've got to, they've got to walk their journey themselves uh, and, and preparing. So it's about sharing how I dealt with alopecia. Yeah. You know, I didn't even know you had alopecia. I didn't even know alopecia was a thing can, until you can told we me. Talk a little bit about that because I, yeah, I I know what it is, but I don't understand where it's come from and yeah, like yeah. what what yeah. So alopecia is basically an autoimmune uh, uh, disease. It well, yep. it is classed as a disease, but. Well, basically what, what happens is that uh, your, your autoimmune system attacks the black hair follicles right, and then okay. it sees them as bad and it does that in different forms. So there's, new, there's about seven different strains of alopecia. But the, the, um, the three main ones are alopecia areata, which are, are patches on the head uh, that come and go, uh, which is really frustrating for the people with the alopecia areata. There are alopecia totalis, which is just total loss of head hair, mm -hmm. or just or total loss of body hair and, and keep the head hair. Um, and then the one I've got is alopecia universalis. So I don't grow any hair whatsoever wow, in my okay. body, and it doesn't come back. So um, again, different strands, different journeys, yeah. and people having to deal with them in different ways. So um, you know, I've always been a true advocate of alopecia awareness. Mm. Uh, not necessarily I do, do I want a cure, uh, but I want people to be very cautious when they talk to you because some people uh, can take it quite frustratingly bad when they, when they turn around and say, oh, that chemotherapy is really bad. Like, alopecia is a byproduct of, um, of chemotherapy because you know, it makes you lose your hair. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're you're very very ill um, yeah. and some people with alopecians as we're called some alopecians really take that you know quite, quite to heart I don't I, I, I use it, I use my position as an ambassador for, yeah. for alopecia as everyone should do with alopecia yeah. and just explain to them what alopecia is so it's, it's a disease that you got at four is it something that you're inherited with or is it like do you have brothers and sisters or is this something that's through your family or well this is the thing about alopecia they don't know too much about it um, it's about a dominant gene and a recessive gene, mm -hmm. and if you're past them, past them through your your parents, mm -hmm. uh, they could sit down in your body. Now, the key to it is the trigger. Um, so there's been a lot of talk on what the trigger is, mm -hmm. but ultimately no one knows what the trigger is. Right. So Liam could have the recessive and dominant gene in his body, mm. but it may never trigger. Yeah. So you'll never lose your hair. Yeah. Until so I meet a partner, it's the same with blue eyed, brown eyes. Yeah. If you have that character, you're a carrier of that, that gene of a, as a recessive gene, you need another blue eyed yeah. carrier of recessive That's carrier. right. I, I've so got you brothers. Could, you, you could have got it at 10, 12, 4 is not a. I've always had it. But, but, but just hypothetically speaking, you yeah. could get it at any point in your life. The trigger. De yeah. Depending on where this trigger happens. Yeah, definitely. Mm. And then, and then, and we're seeing it now in the in the foundation that the hardest thing to deal with is yeah. people at 30 years of age as you wow. know wow so it can happen yeah of course wow. it can happen and, and, and 
people say that stress triggers it, but yeah. it can be anything that triggers it, really. Mm. So I don't necessarily, I, I think stress isn't one of the major players in it, but I was four years of age. Uh, was I stress, Was I full of stress at that yeah. age? No. And within a week, I had all my hair lost. So did you eat, do you remember, I mean obviously you don't remember, but does your mom and dad remember any dietary changes, any allergic reactions, anything? Well there was one made, when I was four, uh, or stroke five, I can't remember exactly what year it was, but one of the major things that happened was my grandfather died. Wow. Yeah. So that was a, wow. that was a, a life changing moment. But me being me, I don't know whether I understood my grandfather died, or I just seen everyone else in pain, right. and then used that as, wow. as, as, as a trigger. So. Um, people have, have had alopecia, got pregnant, had a baby, and during the pregnancy, the hair's gone back. Yeah, wow. yeah. So, there, there's somebody that I know that has this um, product uh, that actually grows the hair back as well, very natural. Mm. She said this has never happened before, and she somehow found, found dis discovered this product. Oh, well, well, yeah, well, I'm sure there's a lot of people in, the, in our in our alopecia community. Um, in, with the, the foundation, we would love to, to hear. I'm going to follow up with her. She lives yeah, in New York, yeah. and I was going to get her onto the show. Um, we haven't figured out how to do phone interviews yet. But yeah, her we're story trying is, to work on it. Yeah, her story is really uh, like, interesting to me just because she has uh, she got it late in, in, in her life. Yeah, she got alopecia herself. Late in her life. She ended yeah. up losing her baby. She, yeah. had a, she had a pregnancy, and then she lost her baby, and then. She got alopecia. But then herself. she found out it was the toxins in her in her like shampoo and so she really went along with the you know what the ingredients are in the different products that she uses mm -hmm. and yeah so she that's her whole like path that she went down um it's it's uh yeah i mean i'll, I'll find out who she is and i'll connect yeah, you guys yeah, definitely and like i think there's a lot of people out there who are searching for the cure and again it's a lot of those that have just um basically had the trigger and their hair starting to fall out yeah the, the ultimate the bottom line of this though is that we are very healthy. Yeah. When, apart from losing our hair, yeah. I went on to play professional course, sport. Yeah. There's a number of professional sportsmen out there. Nick Kyrgios's brother is, is exactly the same as, mm. as me. I, I do get mistaken for him at time to time, but um, mm -hmm. the, the, we are, there is nothing really wrong with us apart from no. a visual effect that we don't have any hair. Um, and the, there is a couple of focuses there, which uh, you know, I'm very strong on, on, on dealing with alopecia, is having a really good friends network mm. and having a focus. So rugby league was my focus. My friends and family were amazing mm. through my uh, dealing with alopecia in a very tough neighborhood in Salford. Mm. Um, you know, very working class, yeah. people would take my hat off. I wore a hat till I was 21. Yeah. They'd throw the hat, you know, I, I would I would have to learn to defend myself, uh, which kind of give me my little bit of toughness. It's a know. bully, bully. There's a bulliness to this. I can see. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. So you're an industry influencer. I see that you can, you, you, you know, you can probably influence and, and inspire lots of people. That you know, you, you live with it. You're kind of an expert at living this. Have you yeah. thought about going down the in industry influencer path and really making it a brand, almost a brand of? I've never really thought about it. I, I think, uh, for me, the biggest buzz I get is speaking to people with alopecia and make them realise that their journey is their own. My journey is my own journey and I, I just want them to understand that, you know, the way I dealt with it is not necessarily the way that you deal with yeah. it. Because we yeah. can't, we're two different people. Yeah. You know, you got to understand that. But I, I went and met a uh, young lad and he, he may be listening because uh, I put it out to our alopecia community. Um, Oscar, I met Oscar um, a couple of weeks ago and he's amazing and I could tell very 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 quickly that I knew that he was going to be okay with mm. alopecia because he's got a focus he plays in a band he plays soccer he plays he does gymnastics mm. his friend sorry his family network are amazing mm. I just know he's going to be fine mm. I, I you know my, my job BC and I'm supposed to be pit pointing out industry influencers industry influencers and I really see that like I don't know have you thought of maybe creating a group that people can come together across the globe that have alopecia, something that you can lead. She's always something. thinking. She's always thinking. I, I, know, I love it. I love that, thinkers. You know, thinkers. something that you can stand behind and you can uh, give advice. And obviously, everybody's different, but. Well, know. to be honest, the foundations that I've been a part of, I've got, it's an amazing group. We have a Facebook group, we've yeah. got an Instagram group. Okay. Uh, and I'm constantly on there. So I'm still a part of the UK one. Yeah. And I'm part of the Alopecia Foundation. Um, New South Wales one because I work quite quite closely with with Sarah who's the branch manager for New South Wales and Greg and you know all the other groups and I'm constantly on there like whether it's just 
uh, commenting, oh, you know, you look stunning because girls are trying on new wigs. Uh, or, or people like how I met Oscar. Yeah. Oscar's mother asking me for advice on, yeah. on, on how, how I can, if I could speak to Oscar. And I love that. Yeah. I absolutely love that. And I think what, what I'm trying to do with the, uh, the New South Wales and, and Sarah is to do more constant support meetings. So, you know, we, one month we'd have a women's only because it's important that the women speak about cosmetic yeah, yeah. Definitely. and wigs where the blokes don't really, really care for that. Mm. Uh, some may do, but we'll have a segment of that. But it's, the, the lads are just want to get together and have a chat. Yeah. You know, maybe do something sport-wise or yeah. go and see this or go and do that. So, mm. And then there's a kids one where we take the parents and then the kids are playing. Then we take extra the parents and put them in a room with a dermatologist yeah. and get the answers to them questions that my mother never got. Wow. Yeah. So th th there's, a, there's a few things that we uh, I would like to do and um, I I've only been a part of the committee for about a month now so it's just steady steps to find out where we're at and uh, what, we, what we can possibly do. So with the, because what I like about Carlo is I didn't even know about that. I just thought he, you know, he, was, he didn't have a hair. Yeah. You know about alopecia yeah. or anything, and he just didn't, he always embraced it. You know, he embraced um, alopecia and being bald. People used to say say it all the time in the footy. What was your nickname? Oh, well, the bald warrior. Bald, bald, bald warrior. Bald warrior. The, the happy egg. You know, yeah, the happy oh. egg. <laughs> which I've, was, got, I've got loads of all eggs, bod, You know, but so the, these these things come up, and like he just said, yeah, the egg does this, and he just like yeah. plays off that yeah. instead of like. Uh, instead of just you know being reactive to the yeah, situation, yeah. so uh, it's funny that you say play because you have a very playful like mm. essence about you. Your smile and you're just very like light and playful. And you want, and wants to be you want to be yeah, around like him. a hug, like a big yeah, bear, you, you know. Yeah, hug him then, Sheena. Oh. Give, him give him a hug then, Sheena. Oh. Cheers, Sheena. Cheers, Sheena. <laughs> no, I just think I do see that you can be an industry influencer in this space and help people of all ages. So if I can, if I can, if I can use my journey to it, as, and that's what ultimately I'm about. I think yeah. the, the awareness, what you just said, was mm. perfect. Then because people, uh, let me take you back 20 years ago. Not many people knew about breast cancer, mm. prostate cancer. I'm telling you now, you could go anywhere on Bondi Beach and yeah. say, you know about br prostate and breast cancer, and everyone would know. Yeah. yeah. Because it has been made aware now with alopecia, because they don't see it as a life-threatening um, disease, which mm. I'll, I'll go into it into a second, but. They don't see it as a life-threatening disease, so no, really no research has been done on it. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is what really gets me down. When a person gets alopecia or triggers alopecia at 30, 25, when they've been so um, in touch with their own hair, yeah. you know that turns people into a depressive state. Yeah. And then, and then we're, we're in a in a different ball game. Then mm -hmm. we're now you know dealing with people with severe depressive uh, mentality issues, which can lead to to you know to committing suicide and yeah. suicidal thoughts. I, I want to try and get people out of that. Yeah. So they we're only going to do that with with people in the public eye you turn around and saying, oh, you've got alopecia, rather than saying, oh, how's the chemotherapy going? Yeah, yeah. exactly right. So, that mentality yes. shit. Yeah, and we can yeah. do that. We do that through awareness, as, mm. you, as you know, yeah. Jimmy. Mm. And the only way we can do that is, uh, is, is spreading the word that yeah. well, alopecia is fine. You yeah. know? We just look a bit yeah, different. I, I, no, it's I, it's I a really benefit I, in the way. You got I, no, you got, your, your one's benefit in the way. You don't have any hair. Well, I know, I'm I know, I've got the Italian hair. And it's everywhere. Wiry. It's wiry. Well, yeah. well, as a kid, you don't see that. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, there's something about this. Is it, like, when I see you, I don't see how alopecia at all. There's a judgment when you say that we are alopecia and we are just like you. I just, I wish people just didn't see that. They just saw through the person's spirit. And this goes for gays, lesbians, people that are fat, like people that are thin, heads. people are redhead, yeah. people that look funny. <laughs> <laughs> again, again, that, that, I think that, that comes that comes into the way that you're brought up as well yeah. because. I have never seen race, I've never seen yeah. gender, I've never seen colour, mm. um, yeah, there's big people, short people, long people, you know, white people, there's all kinds of, accepting different and we're into this equality which yeah. which I, I've i always had equality to be totally honest, yeah. um, whether my whether my boss is a, is a female or a male, I don't care, yeah. you know, you never, and I think we've got to be open minded as individuals yeah. and I, I see, I look out where we are now in Bondi, it's yeah. amazing, and mm. every single person is unique. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think there's a difference between saying it and understanding it. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. And I was just mentioning that before. It's like it, it, for it, I was saying to Katie, yeah. it's not for us to see everyone. My point of view, like yeah, it's for us to learn about what other people's journey is. You yeah. know, so you yeah. can see what they what they are, and then you might get an understanding. 
Yeah. I, I love sometimes when I've got to get the train or I'll sit there and I'm really good people. I love people watching. Mm. Uh, I think it's quite freaky sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> I think You're like how you can get lost. I'm st I'm stalking, <laughs> stalking. Like, Hello. Hello. But I love people watching for the simple reason and I constantly think that that one person has got such an amazing journey yes. that we don't even know about. You know, I do. I, I sit think the same thing like when I'm on the freeway and it's bumper to bumper traffic and there's all these cars around you every single person in a car has a different story yeah, and a different you know a different perspective on life and different things that they happened that morning and yeah I, I did a, I did a couple of different workshops and they did the same scenario and I got to learn a lot about this that what you were just saying then yeah. and then they said pick a pick a person in the room because we don't know anyone with like 50 people in the room Pick a person, you, we're there for three days, and they say, pick a person in the room that you just don't like. Oh my and gosh. They, and they say, just pick a someone that you just don't think you would hang out with outside of this, or you think that they're, they're weird, or they got a monobrow, or that something, something that you don't <laughs> like about it. And then you want to, and they go, okay, cool, and they go up to the person. So you go up to the person, and they go sit next to the person. And you're like, everyone has to do it. You can't walk out the room until you do it. Oh my God. Sit down with the person, they go, okay, cool. Now you're gonna take that person to lunch. And you take that, that person to lunch and you find out about that person. And you ask them questions. And you say to them, like, honestly, what, what, you, know, what, you, what you felt on face value, um, what, you told them on, what you tell them on face value, and then you get to see them from what they are. I took a guy and I, you know, I was really honest with the guy. It was this, it was this Russian, I think it was this Russian guy. So you, you picked this guy? I picked this yeah. guy. Uh -huh. Yeah, he's Russian. He looked like a serial killer. So, yeah. And I told him that. Is that a bad thing to say to this guy? Because he could potentially be a serial killer. I never know. So I sat down with him and I found out his journey. He was like a, uh, he was in the, um, the, equip, the, the Russian army and he was just this stern man, but when he, when he opened up and chatted to him, I was like, this guy's awesome. Yes. You know, I'm just yeah. I'm just going on face value yeah. on saying that this person's not good, he's a serial killer. Well, I, think, yeah. I think this is this is our society today. We see things on Instagram, uh, we, we see things on TV shows, and instant, we judge people in an instant. instant. Yeah. And I think just going out, you know, I, what I love now, and I tell you, learning about sales and stuff like that, I love going out now and just speaking to people. Mm. I go to I'll go to a bar on my own and just sit there and people go, You're a weirdo you <laughs> and, I'm, and I just sit there and have a beer on my own mm. and talk to just absolutely anyone. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I did I used to do it in, in England all the time when I went back for the year. I, I went back to a few pubs and just sat there because I really like I, I love my pale ales and yep. you know, different breweries and stuff like that. So I'll go and have a few beers or a tasting paddle and I'll sit there on my own tasting this beer and just get talking to someone. Yeah. And I tell you what, it's just, it's, it's a dying art now because no one ever does that. Yeah, you know, exactly. They'd rather go Tinder. on Facebook and add you on, add you on yeah, Facebook. Yeah, Facebook, or Tinder and all this. Bumble, and there's another one, Bumble. Yeah. I don't Grindr. know. Grindr. Grindr. <laughs> <laughs> there's all kinds of different ones, but um, I, I just think, I just think go out and have a chat. Now, who are we to judge? You know, one person that taught me one of the key steps to to, uh, to meeting people for the first time was Adrian Wally's father. Oh, okay. So I, I grew up with Adrian uh, from a, being, a, being a baby, and his father was always like a second father to me. And, yeah. and he said something when I was very young, and it always stuck with me. He said, Carlo, you never get the second chance to make a first impression. Mm. Yeah, exactly right. So I've always in the back of my, always in the back of my mind. But when people tell you, oh, such and such a person, he's yeah. not a nice person, he does this, he does that. That's their relationship with that person. Exactly right. Not yours. So I always go, well, let me judge for me for myself. Yeah. But I always, I always introduce myself. I always shake my hands. I always eye to eye contact. Mm. I always make sure that I understand the person. Yeah. And then I'll make my own judgment on that individual rather than being told what yeah. to do. Exactly right. Because you know, communication is split up into. Oh, there's two different studies. One done from the same guy, and it's like 55% physiology. 38% uh, tone and 7% words, you know, so what you say is actually, you know, n not relevant, it's how you, how you approach someone. And the same thing goes as another one, which is similar, it's not so much words, it's tone and physiology. Not one of them said on Facebook, that's how you get to know someone, mm -hmm. you know, everything's about communication through tone and how you approach someone. Yeah, yeah. How you going, Carla, how are you? Yeah. It's like, okay. how you go, hey Carla, how you going? <laughs> you, know, you can see the difference straight yeah. away in that. But you get to see that from, you know, when you actually speak and connect with people. And another thing that's, as we're talking about this, I'm sorry, my mind goes. That's all right, that's what we're here for. But I think also as well is that you could be having the shittiest day ever, mm. 
and you're getting introduced to someone that potentially could change your life. Yeah. Exactly right. And you've got to rise above that feeling to, in order to, to have a, you know what, I, you've got, I've done it many times where mm. you have to be this person that's very positive in order, in order, I can do it now when I'm meeting, you know, executives and, and, and stuff like that. You, you, you have to, you have to be this person, and you have to, no matter what's happening in your day, you have to blank it out for at least an hour or two, just mm. in order to, to do what you've got to do. And it's sometimes difficult, but it is, it's something that people aren't aware of, and they'll have this negative mirror, and, and then, and then that will affect the person that you're talking to. Yeah. So what can we do? What do you think we can do? Bra let's brainstorm. We're good at brainstorming. How can we change this? mentality that this disconnected society that we had just go out and have a chat with someone well i think smiling it starts with smiling yeah um it was so funny i was in yoga the other day and they're like <laughs> this is a little bit gross but she's like your faces look like cats assholes <laughs> like 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 let's have a treasure cat you know when you smile you know everything else looks a little bit uh you know lighter and, lighter and yeah, brighter so like yeah. it starts in, starting with a smile yeah that kind of tells a lot about a person physiology and, uh, yeah. 65 percent of communication is yeah, physiology yeah. if it's a smile then yeah, it yeah. does start with a smile doesn't eye it? eye contact yep means you that you respect the person mm. respecting the person means there's like a common yeah like respect and yeah that. and just chat like i'm so, like there's you know, so you know, many people you know, another part of that is i i find i understand myself and i understand that the good things and the bad things so I constantly challenge myself. Mm. You know, uh, one of the things I'm doing at the moment is to ensure I start a lot and then I get I get, I get sidetracked. Yeah. So I'm really challenging myself at the moment. Wherever I start, try and finish. Yeah. yeah. And and that's that. I do that all the time now. Mm. Even in the gym, I go, oh, that extra set. No, no one, no one's watching me. And then I go, no, no. Mm. Be true to yourself. Challenge yourself. Finish the set. Yeah. So. You've got to chat. I think that that's the key is understanding yourself and challenging yourself yeah. constantly because you're not. When you say you're a finished product, there is no one who's a finished product. Exactly right. You got to constantly challenge yourself in order to do the, the best thing for you, not not anyone else, but just for you, just mm. to, to just to be the best person you can be. Yeah, definitely. I like that. That's yeah. good. Yeah, and then you're showing up to life and you're being your authentic self. Yeah. And then that way you're attracting and your life is. It's a lot more special because of that, you know. So. And yeah, I think it's it's just amazing to see that we can't, you know, we're, we're meant to be, we're designed to be connected, you know, mm. and we're designed to be connection. And and I think we're we're using the instant gratification world to think that we're connecting, yeah, but it's not. And remember that vi that movie that I saw yesterday with Greg Braden? Um, he was talking about the different um, the way that we are as a society, and he said that um, the animal um, the animal uh, kingdom by nature is harmonious mm. like you don't see them they kill for food but other than that they work in harmony together and yeah. this this movie was saying that we're going away from our natural instincts as a as a world and um yeah just i think that there's a lot of people hold a lot of anger and a lot of um resistance towards other people and i think if people are a little bit more open to mm. accepting friendships and chats and because sometimes I'll, 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 I'll say hi to somebody on the road and they'll look at me like what do you want like mm. you know and there's a lot of negativity that people hold against other people but if people can just I don't know be well, we're, 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 we're going against the thing that actually built us to where we got to in the first place you know we're, the, what we got to in the first place is society doing things in a community based yes, yeah. feel and now the community is virtual yeah. it's not in the physical yeah. you know we're not helping each other in the physical realm to help each other build houses or yeah. helping the community because it was always bigger than us now we think it's a, you know as a point where we're just not well not that but that's that again going back to that challenge because we hold the key don't we yeah we can change that tomorrow by mm. by challenging ourselves exactly so right. um you know certain avenues just putting your phone in your pocket and talking if there's a group here how many do you see now everyone's on the phone yes. yeah i love it because Smith, smithy one of your best mates just turns around and goes right Phones down, everyone. Yeah. Let's, let's have a beer. Whoever, whoever's phone goes off first, they have to buy the round. Uh, yeah, we, we turn, we turn it into a bit of a game. Yeah. But it's 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 the way that you can challenge yourself in order to get out of like, this technology. Technology is great. Don't get me wrong. I love yeah. technology because yeah. it it, it make, makes us connected all over the world. Mm. But 
there's also a downside to it. Definitely. Too much of anything can kill you, as uh, Da Vinci says. Yeah. yeah. So you know you've got you've got to have this happy medium, uh, mm. and I think it all starts and ends with us yeah. as individuals. Challenge yourself and be focused. Hey, I see your mate Smithy everywhere now. I'm at the fitness first. He's on uh, the fitness yeah, yeah. first magazine. Yeah, he's yeah, a, yeah, he's man. a fa Chris Smith. He's a famous model. Um, there's a guy that you can. Oh, he's not a trainer though. He's, he's a model. He, I finally spoke to him today. He's, he's on his way to Melbourne to see his young child. Oh, uh, is he? Good man, Smithy. I've met him a couple of times. So, uh, yeah, he's a, he's a he's a model. Sheen. I was just saying because Sheen was saying before that she wanted a uh, a hot guy to work out with to, and motivate her. So. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> And I've just uh, been saying that I've been sitting in this studio for the last 10 weeks. You've never mentioned my name, Colin. Oh, uh, well, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, evil uh, weather's season. nice. Weather's, weather's nice. nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's nice out there, We're isn't it? We're getting ready for the city to surf tomorrow. <laughs> oh, <laughs> good change of subject there, Sheena. Good change of subject. Liam, you're like a brother to me. It would be yeah. really wrong for me exactly to like right. visualize you naked or, exactly. you know, any we of that. Tried, mate, you, you did that <laughs> once no, and you, like, and you was, blocked it out. I had, to, I had to go home and, like... I'm glad. You're like a, she's like a, a sister to me, so... And yeah, she, she always keeps me in check on the radio show. I'm just so happy though. Like I'm so happy that this is evolving and the wellness radio is, we get to talk to great people like Carlo. And yeah. It's just, it, it is amazing who you can bring together. It's like-minded individuals. That's why I want to just continue to build that and, yeah. and see people's message and promote you for what you're yeah. doing, you know, yeah. for alopecia and, and anything in, um, you know, in, in your outside world as well. So. Yeah, no, it's, I think it's amazing. Again, um, you know, you know my story, a lot of people know my story, but the fact of the matter is everyone always always captivates on the successes. Uh, they don't realise that it took a lot of failures to get to that yeah. success. Um, and, and persistence. Yeah. You know, um, uh, I, I, I've done what I've done and I'm very proud of them. Every time I reach one challenge, I, you know, I'm searching for the next one. Yeah. And every time you search for a challenge, there's going to be failure. And, and, and people are in this false world at the moment to think, I want instant success or instant yeah. gratification doesn't happen that way you know yeah. you've got yeah. to work hard and you've got to understand why and what you're doing in order to, to do what you're doing and I think you've got to be prepared to, to fail a fair mm. few times you know and get a success so I think you know uh, avenues like this and Bondi Radio giving you the opportunity to talk about wellness it doesn't necessarily just mean in a physical sense you know you've got to be constantly challenging yourself on yeah. again yeah. in order in order to fail a little and learn a little uh, yeah. in order to be successful yeah. and just about honesty like you were talking about honesty before and how do you do this because you've always done it with me and I've always ne I've never felt as though that when you're honest with me I never took it personally mm -hmm. you know so I'll give you an example we're down in uh, Griffith and we're playing, do you remember the Griffith, um, what, the Griffith yeah, trial? Yeah, that, that was like, yeah, before, we, we had, to, before we had to reduce the squad for the World Cup, yeah. Well, reduce the squad, so we went to the, um, went to Griffith, right, and as a trial match, and Carlo picked me on the wing, and before we went on this trial match, um, and the next week we are going to play against Fiji, an international game, so it was a week before we played a trial match, and Carlo came to me and goes, I don't know if you remember me saying, you saying this to me, he goes, I don't think you're going to be playing next week. But usually in a coach, I'd think, you're an asshole. You know, like, how how did you not do that? Yeah. But he did it in a way like, okay, no problem. But it's just because he's so friendly and so he's nice friendly, and bubbly and he helpable. Did it, he did it in a way, and he talks about challenge. He did it in a way that he, I don't, I don't know if he subconsciously did that or to me, or it's like, I took the challenge in myself like to see. Step up a bit? I yeah, stepped yeah, up. Yeah, I just yeah. took it myself that I'm going to do whatever it takes to make that, te that team the next week now. Yeah. Because there was a lot of young guys coming through, and I was on the tail end of my career. I, I retired after that, mm -hmm. re-retired after that one. Yeah. And then the next week, I played played a, I was a okay game, good game. Yeah. And he picked me the next week against Fiji, and I'm like, yes, I've got, yeah. got back in that squad again. I injured my bloody ankle, yeah. and that was the last game of foot. I think yeah. the last game of footy, a bar those nines tournament, which I'm not a nines player. Just I, think, that out. I think I think from a coach's point of view. You constantly got to challenge people, but you also got you have got to be honest. I, I, I don't like lying. Yeah. I, I never. It's not a part of my makeup. Yeah. I've got values and morals that I stick by, and I really work hard mm. to know that at the end of the day or in the morning when I look in the mirror, I'm happier the person yeah. that looks back. Now, you know that's the key. That's the challenge about being morally in tune. Yeah. Now, I, I wasn't lying to Liam. You know, at the end of the day, yeah. I wasn't. I was never going to lie because. He's giving great service, but I wouldn't lie to anyone. Yeah. If they ask me, I'd tell them the truth. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the good thing about being a coach is that you're open to being wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And I think yeah. you want to be proven wrong. If I, if you prove me wrong, then I've done my job. Yeah, exactly right. So, um, I, I, and I do that 
I do that constantly with players, I do that in business. Because the correlation between business and sport, you know, high performance is high performance. It doesn't yeah. matter which way you look at it. Now, I've done it where I've turned around and people have said, oh, you're the... You're a World Cup, a World Cup coach. You, you know, you beat England, blah blah blah. Mm. And then all of a sudden they go, yeah, but we're the, the, the little crap back is, but we're not rugby league players. So, but that's where you're wrong. Mm. You might not be physical rugby league players, but the the, the attributes of a physical uh, high performance athlete mm. over a mental high performance athlete mm. yeah. are still the same. Yeah. So even though that you know you're not going to play a, a full game of rugby league. I need to. I need you to be mentally in tune to your your attributes as a, as a mental athlete, yeah, exactly rather than right. a physical. Because it is about it is it's a mental game. Mm-hmm. And you know what? In that game, I sat because I decided in that Fiji game. I never told anyone this. Honestly, I don't think anyone sat in the Griffith game. Uh, uh, had a tear in my eye, and I had like I was in the shower, about ready to go, thinking. And this could be my last game ever. Because Carlos told me I'm not going to play this week and I'm not playing footy anymore. This is my last game. So what would, what would, what would I do if it's my last game? And then I started talking to myself, like, I'm just going to run every time I get... Every time I get an opportunity, I'm going to take the ball up and I'm going to play as if I had energy. And that's the thing that got me in the... You know, yeah, you there was no mental yeah, block. There was yeah. no mental block. It was like... This is my last game. Yeah. And then that, that was the opportunity, and that's what I think Carla was getting out as well. It's, it is a mental, it's a mental game um, with, with with sport and with yeah. performance. Well, you don't have to lie. I, I've been in, I've been with coaches, and, and again, you take the best out of the good coaches and, and and the worst coaches you leave behind. But I've literally been blatantly lied to by some high respected coaches when I was playing and I always vowed I would never do that yeah. mm. I would never do that I'd be as honest as I could now um, you know I remember that last game because that, that was Simon Benetti's Simon Benetti I played, Simon with, my, Benetti played. I played with my hero you won't yeah. know there's any of these guys but he played for the NRL Roosters and he won was a like pre- the, won a premiership won a premiership and he was the guy because I played hooker that was my position he played hooker in that position he played for the team that I followed as a kid Yeah. you know yeah. and then I got to play with him in my second I thought it was my last, last game. game yeah yeah. It was full of irony that whole that whole game. It was really good that and in Griffith, it, it, you know, it's a, such a massive Italian community. Mm. It was great that we could do that. And um, yeah, there's, a, there's another one as well. Can I share another one? Uh, I know we've got to go. Just we've got one one minute. I'll share one more. Yeah, okay? okay. I always want to play with Anthony Minicello. <laughs> That's my goal. I want to play with Anthony Minicello. That's us put it out there to the universe. I want to play with Anthony. Anthony came down. Mini came down for that tour against Griffith. So I didn't know Minnie as a kid. I knew him growing up because he knew my uh, family a little bit. And then Minnie came down to this tour in Griffith. I thought, he's going to play with us, you know. Didn't end up playing. Gets the half time of the game. And I, I was playing wing at the time. And Minicello is a full back, you know, the, the yeah. guy at the back catching all the balls. Um, and Carlo comes up to me and he goes, I'm going to pick the same team. Liam Zolli on the wing, blah, blah, blah. And he goes, actually, Liam, do you want to go full back? And I go, yeah, I'll go full back. So as I'm walking out, I've never played full back in my life. And that's Anthony Minicello's position. He's standing there next to me. I go up to him and go, Anthony, how do I play full back? With the, as I'm walking out there. So this is my hero that I'm getting, that I'm chatting to. So I didn't play, play with Minnie at the end. I got to play in his position and got coached by him in that moment. I'm like, well, this is full of irony. Yeah. You know? So the, that's, if you open up that opportunity. Yeah. He's yeah. A very, he is a very good lad, though, and I think he, he loves stuff like that. And yeah. He's going to be a very good assistant coach in the World Cup. Exactly right. So that's my next thing. I want to be part of some World Cup because I didn't get that opportunity. <laughs> but uh, that's a story for a different day. Are you, re- uh, are you ready to finish it up? No, no I'm not ready. I'm not ready to finish it up. We're running overtime though, so we've got we've got uh, the boys in here. We've got to yeah. come in and have a chat quickly. What What's on next? Yeah, it's uh, Jay Lloyd for Our Society Show. We'll be up next. Perfect. We're going to wrap up and these yes. boys are going to be taking over the reins. Thanks so much, Carlo, for your time. Uh, wait, wait, Carlo, pleasure. how can people get in touch? Can we talk about the groups, those two groups that you were Yeah, saying? yeah, yeah, the alopecia groups. You yeah. just search the AAAF on yeah. Facebook. Okay. Um, you can get in touch with me via my Facebook or Instagram. Yeah, it's, it's really easy. We're going to tag you in this and we're going to write yeah, a couple yeah. of articles so people will be able to reach out yeah, to you. Yeah, and, and if any questions, I'm happy to come back. Is, is that, like Anything that I can do to promote the alopecia Great. awareness. And, uh, and especially for, for a good friend like Liam. Yeah. Legend. And now Sheena. And now Sheena. Who's, yeah, you're a, on. who's going to be my social influencer. Exactly ah, right. Exactly I'm so right. excited. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Thank you very we much. feel as though we could be chatting for hours here, and we've got to go now. So thank Thanks, you so Facebook much. Thanks, Facebook friends, you. and thank all you the so listeners much. out there. I'll see you guys soon. Bye. 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 Yes. Sorry, Jay. This is Bondi Radio. Don't worry about it. There we go.
Are you from Are you from England as well? Manchester. Yeah. England. Oh. <laughs> it's the same called Salford. All right. Where are you from? Ashton. Ashton on the line. Yeah. In the. Yeah. 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 I love it. It's every Sunday. Oh, uh -huh. Is that you talking or is that you talking? It's every Sunday. It's been mint. Yeah, everyone just started fighting. Small so world just, just ruined it. Didn't it? <laughs> How funny is that? Small world, definitely indeed. Hey, I'm from Manchester and Salford. Right? <laughs> 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 yeah. You're right. on here on the trip. Don't have this 13 years. Bloody hell. <laughs> He's a lot of going home. I went back for a year last year and that was, um, yeah, I realised that I, I don't want to go back. No, same here, too used to it. All right, guys, that's the wellness show for another week. We'll see you next Saturday. Bye for now. Can you just set another